Hi, everyone, and welcome to our fourth Future of Business. My name is Steve Miranda, and I'm the Executive Vice President of Oracle Applications. I hope all of you are safe and healthy uh, and really managing through this uh, time of incredible change really globally. And as we've gone through, and hopefully various parts of the world are becoming post-pandemic now, and returning to some semblance of normalcy, what we're finding, however, is that while some parts of the world are returning to normalcy, some things have changed, and in fact, quite dramatically, and in fact, have changed not only during pandemic, but going forward. And businesses, our customers, and those of not our customers, are dealing with an increasing speed of change whether it be ongoing supply chain disruptions and thinking about how you think about your supply chain much differently in a much more resilient way. Whether it's now it's known as, in the United States at least, the great resignation, but a lot of pressure on labor pools and how to attract talent and keep talent as this next generation of workforce have an increasing number of choices um, towards their activities and their careers. New technologies is always moving faster and faster enabling businesses to take advantage and change their business models fundamentally. And of course, dealing with your customers. More and more today, dealing with customer digitally is become a nice, instead of a nice to have, really a must have in the new world of doing business in digital customer service, digital customer sales, and in digital customer interaction. So these and many more. And in some ways, this is really what Oracle applications and our cloud applications have been talking about for quite some time. And the COVID pandemic has really just put a magnifying glass on this and the need to deal with rapid change very, very quickly. And our approach to helping our customers succeed is really in five fundamental principles. First, our customer first mindset. Getting closer from Oracle becoming a product company to Oracle really being a service company. Involved with the customer implementations, advising how to best marry technology and functionality to change your business process. Providing new services that Oracle never had before. Things like customer success managers, implementation success managers, and having development tighter engaged with the go live process for our customer success. In addition to that, getting closer to our customers through a social network. Oracle Customer Connect, allowing customers to interact with partners, with each other, and with the Oracle product managers directly to give us ideas for enhancements, get clarifications. Again, a much tighter community and a much tighter partnership with Oracle is what we mean by our customer first mindset. Next, increasingly in this time of change, what's become very apparent is the old world of dealing in silos just doesn't work anymore. When you take an order from a customer, the ability to actually be able to fulfill and promise that customer timely delivery of the order in this new digital world with the heightened customer expectations is more and more critical. And our approach to that is having a complete set of applications from supply chain, CRM, HCM, and finance to give you the choice of end to end to eliminate silos and most importantly, drive better information from your dealings with customers, and your supply chain to make better and faster decisions. In addition to the completeness of suite, we also provide the best technology. Oracle is the only vendor who is both an application SaaS vendor as well as a technology infrastructure vendor. And what that enables us to do is bring both those worlds together for the benefit of our customers to eliminate technical debt. And in fact, all 13,000 plus of our SaaS customers have really just revamped their entire technology stack underneath the SaaS applications. Or rather, we've done that for them. Brand new version of the database, brand new versions of technology stack, and an entire new generation two data center, which has given brand new computers and processors, brand new storage, networking, all of which adds to better security, better reliability, and faster performance, eliminating technical debt included in our SaaS service. In addition to technology, we also advance the user interface. Not only in the traditional HTML user interface with now responsive UI, which gives you the same user interface from everything from large screen computers to smaller screen tablets to the smallest of phones to allow you to use your application regardless of your platform with the same user interface. 
And now we've added to that traditional user interface a conversational UI. So much of the same way that in your home, you can get home information by using Hey Google or Hey Siri or Hey Alexa, you can now use your voice and a conversational UI to bring information out of your enterprise systems. In addition to the UI, every quarter, we have application innovation, both driven from our technology, our product managers, but also our customer input through Customer Connect. And in fact, for every product area, financials, CRM, HCM, supply chain, every quarter, we average over 100 new feature functions in each area for our customers, always given to all 13,000 plus customers simultaneously to allow them to continue to innovate at the speed we all live in today. And today, we're going to do a deep dive into analytics specifically. And it's my pleasure to welcome on stage TK Anand. TK is the Senior Vice President of Analytics Development here at Oracle. Welcome, TK. Thank you, Steve. So, TK, thanks for joining us to discuss analytics. Now, you joined Oracle just a few years ago, but already in that time, you made quite an impact. Um, maybe as a refresher to the application audience, can you discuss, bring everybody up to speed on you know, what's been the latest uh, with analytics at Oracle? Yeah, sh sure, Steve. First of all, thanks for having me here. You know, it's been an exciting journey with Oracle Analytics over the past uh, couple of years. Uh, in the summer of 2019, we unveiled a new product strategy designed to meet the emerging needs uh, of our customers uh, and partners across both platforms and applications. First, we laid out a bold vision for Oracle Analytics Cloud as the industry's only analytics platform that combines modern data visualization, AI-powered analytics, all together with enterprise-grade security, governance, and scale. Secondly, we unveiled a hybrid cloud strategy that allowed our longtime OBIE customers to be able to transition to the cloud on their own terms. And thirdly, we embarked on a new application analytics offering for our Fusion Cloud applications, and that's what we're here to discuss today. You know, as we've been executing on the strategy over the past couple of years, we've always put our customers and partners at the center of everything we do. I mean, that's great. The customer centricity we talked about, innovation with AI, and bridging the gap, customers moving to cloud with, with the hybrid strategy. So, so it's, been, it's been great. Um, what's been the impact of that close community engagement uh, and partnership? From, from what I've noticed uh, with the recognition from industry, it's certainly starting to pay off and something that's working. Yeah, you know, uh, the results have been quite incredible. Over the past couple of years, uh, I believe uh, Oracle's seen the largest positive movement in analyst ratings compared to any other vendor in our space. Uh, earlier this year, Gartner recognized us as a visionary, and that was phenomenal. Just last month, Forrester recognized Oracle Analytics as a leader. Uh, we're very grateful for that. And, uh, you know, a number of other analysts like IDC, Bark, uh, Ventana, Nucleus Research have all given us some very strong recognition. Mm -hmm. All of this has been uh, really a testament to the success that our customers and partners are seeing. So that's great. I know that we talk all the time that uh, our success really is our customer success, but congratulations on all that external recognition for, for, for the success and the progress. Now, I know a big part of the success is due to the new Fusion Analytics offerings. Uh, it's unique and innovative offering in our industry. TK, can I turn it over to you to describe to our audience Fusion Analytics in more detail and how it brings a ton of value to our Fusion cloud application customers? Sure, Steve. Happy to do so. You know, the rapidly changing business environment over the past year has required organizations to adapt quickly, and that's only possible if they have rapid insight into what's happening in their business, their customers, their partners, their supply chain, et cetera. And that insight comes from data. Data is the most valuable asset any organization possesses, and it's growing at a tremendous pace. The Fusion Cloud applications represent the trusted systems of record for our customers. They contain high value data about the organization's finances, operations, employees, and customers. Many of our customers also have data residing in non-Oracle applications, bespoke in-house applications, and even real-time data streaming in from website traffic, social media, IoT sensors, and more. The organization's ability to bring all of this relevant data together and turn it into actionable insight 
will be the key to achieving business transformation in this digital age. Fusion Analytics solves this problem with an innovative and turnkey solution. It brings all of the data from your Fusion Cloud applications into one place and it allows your business users, managers, and executives to consume that data via rich interactive dashboards, visualizations, and advanced analytics. It is a solution built on top of the Oracle Analytics Cloud, an autonomous data warehouse, and it is optimized for your Fusion data. If the Fusion Cloud applications are the systems of record in your organization, then Fusion Analytics is your system of insight. It is always connected and propagates all of the changes made in your applications into the analytics. This includes any customizations that you make in your applications, any changes you make in security, and of course, all of the business transactions that are happening in your application 24 by 7. This is a SaaS analytics service that is fully operated and managed by Oracle. At this point, you might be thinking, what about all that data I have that lives outside of the Fusion Cloud applications? Well, Fusion Analytics provides a rich set of capabilities to extend and customize the product. You can bring data from any external source into the data warehouse. You can blend it with your Fusion application data. You can define custom KPIs and business metrics, and then create your own custom reports and dashboards. And most importantly, all of these customizations are preserved whenever new releases are deployed into the Fusion Analytics service. OK, so what can a business user or executive do with all of that data in the Fusion Analytics data warehouse? Well. The product, first of all, comes with a rich set of pre-built analytics that are ready to use. A rich analytical data model, KPIs, business metrics, reports, dashboards, interactive visualizations, and more. And you're free to customize all of these to meet your business needs. Moreover, since all of the Fusion application data comes together in a single integrated data model, you can now do cross-functional analytics. For example, what is the revenue per employee in your organization? How can you improve supply chain costs while optimizing for on-time delivery performance? Cross-functional insights ensure alignment and understanding across your business operations. You can even build integrations with your external stakeholders, including your suppliers, your service providers, and logistics providers and ensure that you have end-to-end -end visibility across the value chain. Since Fusion Analytics maintains snapshots of your data, you can understand not just the current state of your business, but also look at the past, identify patterns and trends, and even predict the future with ML-based forecasting. Sometimes you just need an answer to a business question. And you can pose that question using natural language and get instant answers in the form of numbers, charts, or dashboards. You don't need any technical skills, and we support 28 different languages in which you can ask the question. Let's say you have a problem with some aspect of your business, for example, employee attrition, but you're not quite sure how to go about exploring the data to find the root cause. Well, you can have the system do the hard work for you. AutoML algorithms can crunch through your data and offer you with candidate insights that can serve as a starting point for your analysis. OK, looking back at our journey with Fusion Analytics thus far, we launched Fusion ERP Analytics in September 2019, and then Fusion HCM Analytics in May of 2020. Since then, both of those pillars have been rapidly evolving, and we offer rich functional coverage for the ERP and HCM application pillars. Fusion ERP Analytics provides insights into top line and bottom line financial metrics with the ability to drill into transaction level details. Customers are using it to drive investment decisions and operational improvements, including faster time to close. Fusion HCM Analytics delivers deep workforce insights to drive decisions that impact how your organization supports, develops, and retains its workforce. With pre-built analytics for workforce diversity, team effectiveness, and more. Your HR leaders can reduce employee turnover, identify top talent, 
and shape the organization's overall people strategy. And today, I'm super excited to announce the general availability of Fusion Supply Chain Analytics, or SCM Analytics. With the challenges in the global supply chain today, organizations need insights to make agile decisions and adapt to the rapidly changing environment. SCM Analytics comes with ready-to-use KPIs and metrics to maximize customer service and minimize process inefficiencies and disruptions. Supply chain professionals will be able to detect and understand and predict issues throughout the supply chain to sustain revenue, manage costs, reduce risks, and ensure customer satisfaction. The product currently offers insights relating to order fulfillment, procurement, and spend. And as with the other application pillars, we'll be rapidly enhancing it with new features and capabilities every quarter. All right, now let's see a demonstration of Fusion Analytics in action. I'm Emily Sakofsky with the Oracle Analytics team. Today, we're sharing a short demo showing you where Oracle is taking analytics so you can move beyond asking what happened to predicting the future of your business. Uh-oh, we have a predicted shortage. Okay. Take a look. It's a classic story. Social reviews turn a product, in this case a scooter, into the hottest thing for the holidays. New demand is great, but with the strain on global supply chains, it also creates challenges. Oracle, show me total actual and predicted revenue for scooters but not mopeds for the last two years. That's an impressive spike. If we can meet the demand for the holidays, we'll have a lot of happy customers. Oracle, also show me a stacked bar chart by product with predicted revenue and profits for this year. Yep, the Ultra is the most profitable. So what revenue is at risk if we can't execute? Well, let's see. We've got a lot riding on the Ultra. It could definitely put us over the top this year. But what's inventory look like? Oracle, show me orders and inventory for just the Ultra scooter. Wow, I don't think we can get enough scooters from China in time. We should go take a closer look. All right, let's do this. Okay, see here, back orders and fulfillment lead times have been rising. ML predicts high demand in all scenarios. Let's do this one and solve for 45,000 units at 50% confidence. Okay, I already know new orders will take months, plus ocean freight is slow and expensive right now. Can you ping Vic? Okay. Hey Vic, the Ultra is selling through the roof. Hey Sandra, hey Luis, guess we weren't prepared for this. Nope, we're gonna miss out on a lot of revenue if we don't get more product. Well, I might have an idea. Here, let me share. I'm wondering, maybe we could convert other models into ultras. Check it out. You see, these are the scooters that have a lot of overlapping components. The digital display is really the only thing that's unique. Hey Oracle. Show me current and planned availability for Demons, Electrics, and Ultra products in the U.S. by month. And where is the inventory? I gotcha. Right there. Okay, so between Seattle and Memphis, we have an inventory of about 95,000 Demons and Electrics. Good, that's enough to meet our forecast for all three models. So what about the Ultra Displays? Take a look here at my analysis for display suppliers. So JanCorp in Mexico doesn't have the lowest unit cost, but they are solid on delivery time. And just because I can, let's look at their inventory and capacity. Looks like they can turn around all the displays we need. Okay, now let's figure out where the people are who can do the conversion. Check it out. Dynamic skills in HCM Cloud. It shows electronic assembly skills in Austin and Phoenix. But the candidate pool from Recruiting Cloud shows that Austin's much better in case we need to add extra people or shifts. Let's go with Austin then. Luis, order those displays. Doing it now. And I'll ping Austin to get the ball rolling on conversion. All right, awesome. Awesome. Let's keep our eyes out for updates. Talk soon. Great work. So that was a quick look at where Oracle is taking analytics. You saw new ways of working with data. You saw machine learning predict shortages and show revenue opportunities. 
You saw Sandra use her voice to create dashboards and review her entire business in seconds. And you saw Luis take action from his business applications without ever leaving analytics. These innovations give you new ways to work and they transform data into a resource you can use to predict the future of your business, capitalizing on opportunities you could never have imagined before. And best of all, you don't have to imagine them because with analytics, you can see them. Hey, Oracle, show me a uh, inventory for helmets. Hey, that was an awesome demonstration of Fusion Analytics in action in the real world. Now, I'm excited to introduce a special guest. Chandana Gopal is research director at IDC for the future of intelligence. She looks at how organizations can leverage their investments in data management and analytics to drive data-driven decisions and better business outcomes. Hey, Chandana. Hi, TK. Thank you for having me. Hey, it's great to have you here. You know, we've both been in the BI and analytics space for a while now. While the industry has been primarily focused on analytics platforms and tools, we're seeing a lot of interest in application analytics. In other words, analytics that's purpose-built for line of business SaaS applications. What's your read on this? Yeah, thanks for having me, TK. Uh, this is a really important subject because you're right, we've had data management and analytics tools forever, and they still will continue to be, be that way, right? We need them. Uh, we need the idea of having uh, specialized tools specifically for analytics, for data management, and we need the skill sets that are related to that as well in all enterprises. But what we have is we have a vast majority of our workers that are in business that really can leverage analytics and the intelligence that they provide to them in making their business decisions without being dependent on going to a specialized group or you know, a BI group to get those insights and analytics at their work, you know, at, in the flow of their work, in their process. Um, so that's why we're seeing this rise in the interest in analytic tools that are purpose-built for the, the domain. By domain, I mean the line of business, uh, which really can is, is specialized. They have the workflow, the processes, everything built in for them uh, that they can start, pick it up right away and leverage to make their jobs better and easier for them to do. Great. You know, Chandana, like most line of business applications today come with built-in operational or transactional reporting capabilities. Um, for example, our Fusion Cloud applications come pre-built with OTBI for that purpose. How would you describe to the line of business leader in finance or operations or HR sort of the opportunity and benefit uh, from adopting a modern data management and analytics strategy similar to what we're offering uh, with Fusion Analytics? Absolutely, TK. Um, and, you know, a lot of people conflate the idea of information delivery, which is what we've always had. You know, we've had dashboards and reports and, you know, delivered to us in various formats. Yeah. And we assume that having access to those reports and dashboards is really making us, you know, giving us the analytics and the insights we need. Uh, but in information delivery is not the same as having that intelligence to be able to use uh, in our day to day work. So what we are seeing now is really infusing our applications with the intelligence um, that AI and machine learning and all of these new modern technologies are able to now make much more accessible to the business user uh, so that they can be, you know, they can enhance their own work and they, they can they can have better outcomes in whatever their line of business is, right? Um, and, you know, uh, we, why hasn't this been there before? I mean, we've had the technologies, you know, we've had data stores, we've had databases, we've had applications. What is new right now? Uh, the thing that is new is that the these tools have become much more easy to use for the end user. They are not programming driven. They are not driven by you know someone needing to know SQL or coding or any such thing. They are very intuitive. Um, they allow the end users to look into to you know click through and make understand where the the recommendations are coming from, what the machine is telling them. They can leverage those recommendations to do things like predictions or to do things like advanced analytics. Uh, things that they couldn't do before. They really know their business. Don't get me wrong. These business users really understand their own line of business and the processes related to them. What we're doing now is making things like data science available to them in their applications that they know and use really well uh, to make them better at whatever they're doing. That makes a ton of sense. Um, so Chandra, in your mind, what's the North Star for application analytics, let's say five to 10 years from now? 
For me, I would, you know, the emphasis that I'm seeing come up in terms of the emphasis on data culture, data literacy, making everyone data centric in the way they do their work will be, you know, something that I would love to see happen across the organization. Because even today, a lot of organizations still struggle with getting, bridging that gap where executives, you know, they, they want to be intelligent. They want to make sure that they build that enterprise intelligence in, in, their, in their operations and in their decision making. Uh, but there's a gap between what the, the worker the business user is able to do. Um, so increasing that ability across the board, making data and analytics much more pervasive across the entire organization, making everyone more data centric is something that I would love to see going forward. And the thing is organizations that are able to do it today, they are seeing incredible business outcomes. And these are business outcomes such as, you know, their financial metrics improve, their operational metrics improve, um, their uh, customer service, their employee satisfaction, all of these metrics are business metrics that improve from the use of data and analytics. And I would love to see that become uh, systemic, right? It's become something that everybody has access to and knows how to use. That's great. Chandana, I want to thank you so much for being here and sharing your perspectives and look forward to talking to you soon. That's great, TK. TK thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Now let's hear from Steve, who recently sat down with Corsair to discuss their experiences with the Fusion Cloud applications and analytics. Thanks, TK. So now it's my favorite part where we get to talk and hear from our customers. And today it's a very special day because we're actually being hosted by our customers. I'm here at Corsair Gaming in the Corsair Game Room. And I'm joined today by Tom Cullen. Tom is the CIO of Corsair. So thanks for hosting us here today, Tom. Maybe you give the audience a little bit of background on yourself and Corsair Gaming. Sure. I've been with the company for six months now as our CIO. Corsair is an industry leader in high performance gear and technology to enable gamers content creators, and PC enthusiasts. What's unique about Corsair's integrated system is that you can interconnect all of your components and control it centrally with our IQ software, which further enhances not only your capability, but also your overall experience, whether you're gaming or streaming. And what's interesting about the company as well is that we're always, always pushing the innovation envelope. So as you can tell from everything you see behind you, that we're passionate about innovation and continue to raise the bar every single day. So this is great. So a cool place to be, mm -hmm. obviously an exciting place to work. For Corsair, what's the last year and a half been like for your company, industry? Kind of what challenges have you had to deal with in this time of constant change? Sure, so it's been quite a challenge. So I've been with Corsair for about six months now. And what I will say is that although we've continued to grow through organic growth and acquisition, that we haven't been immune to the supply chain issues that have been going on globally in our industry and pretty much every industry. Yep. And so as a result, as you've heard, if you listen to our recent analyst call with our CEO, Andy Paul, 2021 revenues have been held back at least 10% due to supply chain issues, especially given the, the challenge with uh, graphics processing units and, and the lack of availability, but also pricing in the retail channel. So as a result, it's been a bit of a challenge for us, like everyone, but at the end of the day, you know, the, during the pandemic, I think we all saw an uptick in business. And a lot of it was because all of a sudden everyone's at home. Everyone's at home gaming, streaming, and for most of us on video conferences all day. And so as, as a result, many people decided to upgrade their equipment um, at home to not only increase their overall experience, but then just have better capability. And so while all this was going on, we also embarked in our Oracle eBusiness suite upgrade to the cloud. So just to compound everything. So it's been an interesting six months, but as an industry, it's been a fascinating couple of years. That's quite a six months, dealing with the pandemic, dealing with work from home, returning to the office, spike in demand in your business, but then some constraints. So, so exactly. in interesting. Now, you mentioned you run an e-business suite. My understanding is you're running a highly customized e-business suite and uh, hosted on AWS. So we kind of partially moved to the cloud. Now, the decision was made at that time for Corsair to move to our SaaS applications. Um, Correct. And the company at the time selected Oracle and Oracle Fusion applications. So can you tell the audience a little bit of the whys? Like, what was the decision-making process? Why did you decide to replace the existing eBusiness suite system and, and move to the Oracle Cloud? Sure. So like many companies today, we decided to take a cloud-first strategy um, as, as our overall IT strategy, just to accelerate our digital transformation. And if you look at what we've done so far, we're already running parts of supply chain management and human capital management in Oracle Cloud. And you're right, we're running a heavily customized older version of eBusiness Suite, and we're actually in the process of migrating that to the cloud. So as you can imagine, a pretty substantial undertaking. But one of the benefits to cloud, in my experience, is that it forces you to reconsider all of your customizations. And so look at standard functionality and out-of-box best practices. 
we created a process called Path to Standard internally. And what that did in partnership with your product uh, team is we re-rationalized re all of our all of our customizations, and as a result, ended up with with probably less than one third of what we originally started out with. It's quite amazing a, a path to get there and that much progress. Yeah, exactly. And so my goal always was was to be as standard as possible. And I think one of the other big benefits to cloud is that you get a release every quarter with new functionality. And so for people like me who have been around for a while and have done many upgrades, you can avoid the every couple of year massive upgrade, which many of us have come to dread over time. Right. So, you know, <clears throat> I tend to think of Corsair, especially the industry you're in, as kind of brand new and up and coming. But as you said, 20 year old company, mm -hmm. huge shifts with the change that we've all been going through and able to rationalize your, your business process. So in addition to Fusion applications, uh, I know that Corsair is a design partner with us, an early adopter for mm -hmm. what we're talking about here at this main show, the Oracle Supply Chain Analytics. Can you explain to the audience so what's that project been like? What do you hope to accomplish? And what do you really gain from uh, the analytics and specifically the supply chain analytics? Sure. And so if you look at analytics as a whole, what, you know, one of the things we looked at was during the discovery phase, and through the design phase, we ended up with 400 custom reports from both supply chain but other areas of our business as well, which is a bit overwhelming. And so that, that forced us to take a pause and a relook around what we're actually doing and how we want to approach it. We'd heard about Fusion Analytics Warehouse, but we didn't have any experience with it. So we decided to pilot it with our business users using our data. And so what we found is that the pilot was hugely successful just based on the KPIs or the key performance indicators that are available out of box with Fusion Analytics Warehouse. And so given that, it was a unanimous decision to move forward. And since then, we've, we've begun on the journey. Well, this is what I said at the beginning. <clears throat> my favorite part of the show is hearing from customers. And I really get feedback from our customers. This is the best. And you've just kind of encapsulated why, right? It's amazing kind of the, the story and the journey you've been on. Now, how has that interaction with Oracle been? I, I opened the show talking about our customer first centricity and the changes we're trying to go through. So tell us a little bit, you know, how's the journey been? Feedback for us. How's Oracle doing? from a partner perspective. Absolutely, and I'll give you an example using the Fusion Analytics Warehouse implementation. So by looking at standard functionality out of the box with the key performance indicators, we're going to be able to reduce the number of custom reports by 80 to 85%. So if you look at what that's going to do from a development resource, significant reduction in the amount of development resources that are going to be necessary, not to mention the supportability long-term. Um, but also, I, what I meant to mention earlier is that the standard out-of-box connectors with the Oracle modules that we run, supply chain management, as you had mentioned, human capital management, enterprise resource planning, will pull all of that data into a centralized repository with a robust analytics engine on top. And therefore, what we try to enable at that point is end-user self-service analytics, which is our goal. And the reason why we were able to realize all that is through the strong partnership we have with Oracle, because your product team was with us every single step of the way in evaluation. And we wanted to look at an experiment with supply chain management in particular, which you mentioned we're an early adopter of. We know that all the analytics right now weren't available because we're early adopting technology. However, FAW is going to be able to provide all of that visibility out of the box, which, which we're really looking forward to. Another thing we're looking forward to is artificial intelligence. So as we continue to mature on the platform, what we're hoping to do is take advantage of AI. And really, I think competitive advantage comes from being able to predictively model what's going to happen with your business, model out the scenarios, look at the implications, and make decisions. And when I look at data and, and what it can do to tell the story of your business, I not only look at internal, but external. So for example, if we're able to model out different channel velocity um, throughout our business, but then overlay that with external supply chain factors, that's predictive analytics that many people won't have. So we intend to take full advantage of that as well. That's great. Well, again, I can't thank you enough. I think the audience, you know, hearing this story and this transformation you're going through um, is really uh, have a lot in common with a lot of our customers. Heavily customized system, needing for information. And then again, the, the pros and the cons of this pandemic with sometimes high demand, but then some the constraints to adapt quickly. So, you know, we uh, really appreciate your partnership and we're really looking forward to helping you get to that success uh, that you've achieved. And thanks for hosting us at this really cool uh, game room. And uh, Hopefully you'll kind of teach me how to use some of these games and some of the technology here. It's great. Absolutely. Right. Well, thanks for having me. Right. I Pleasure. appreciate the strong partnership. I appreciate it. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. All right. Now let's move on to our next customer. Joey Fitz from the Oracle Analytics team recently sat down with the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center to discuss their experiences with Fusion Analytics. Let's hear it from them. 
Okay, it's my pleasure to welcome Jane Boyer and John Galley from University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. John, I wonder if you can begin by giving us a little overview of University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, uh, about the organization and also about the function that you lead. Uh, UPMC is a 90,000 plus employee organization. We are at our core an academic medical center. We know at UPMC that we are the backstop for our communities. It's our privilege and our honor to serve as the backstop. Every medical director at the hospitals across Pennsylvania know that if they have a patient who's becoming very ill or is just in a bad way, they can send those patients to UPMC. And we will take care of them. So with that honor and privilege uh, comes a special responsibility, and I will say a special pride, and I think that carries through the, to our, my HR team. Um, I have 600 empl uh, HR employees, and that includes the payroll team as well. And um, they just do an amazing job of taking care of our employees, making sure that we hire the best and the brightest, and uh, that we retain them, that we develop them, and we help them throughout their career at UPMC. Can you speak to, a bit to the, the opportunity that HR analytics provides from recruitment and retention, diversity and inclusion, all the different functions and practices across HR that now are informed by insight? We're currently focused on one-year turnover. And that's a number that we've seen increase a little bit and, and it's going in the wrong direction. Uh, so obviously we wanna get that down. Um, but retention, retention is huge, and it's not just a UPMC thing. It's a, it's a nationwide thing. Um, keeping people is, is really critical at this point. So whatever we can do to figure out what it is that we need to do to keep people, um, th that's going to be huge information to gather. Uh, diversity metrics. Diversity is another big one. We have goals related to diversity. So that's something we're looking to be able to cut and slice and dice, you know, do we have the ethnic diversity that we need? The more diverse you are, the better you're going to be. So putting these, these types of metrics and KPIs at the fingertips of our executives and, and our people leaders is going to be huge. Where we're heading is actually proactively and prospectively looking forward so that uh, rather than just understanding what happened, we want to, uh, to utilize tools like AI that can analyze patterns in the workforce. What is happening at UPMC and how can we predict what's going to happen in the future, what kinds of things might occur in terms of, uh, for example, turnover in the workforce, what type of employees stay with UPMC, uh, how can we integrate that into our hiring practices so that we're more successful, as Jane said, retaining employees in their first year with us. So those kinds of things are exciting for me because we can be more proactive with our management team, more prescriptive in terms of where we want them to focus their energies as leaders. The healthcare industry is very competitive. Um, it was competitive before the, the pandemic. And like all industries, the pandemic has exacerbated uh, the situation we're in. There's just simply not enough uh, resources, nurses, technicians, and other uh, resources to be able to handle the volume of work that we have. And so uh, it's natural when we have something like we lose an employee, well, that happens uh, uh, on a regular basis. And it's natural for our uh, operational leaders to say, we just lost this person. They're making a dollar fifty more an hour somewhere else. We've got to pay our employees more. And it's that kind of anecdotal kind of approach that we found data can really help us move in a different direction. So for example, if we look at that department and we see that, hey, we've made uh, 12 offers over the last month, 11 have been accepted. Well, then that shows that our, our pay levels are, are pretty good. You know, we're getting a, a good acceptance uh, by the, the community at large in terms of the jobs we have available. If, on the other hand, it shows that only two have accepted of the 12, well, then that could show that we have, uh, you know, a, a pay issue there. But I think taking the time to diagnose and understand the issue from an HR perspective before we dive into a solution is really important. No different than taking care of a patient, right? You want to take time to diagnose and understand the problem before you jump into a solution. That makes a lot of sense. And it also requires a, a, a complete perspective, not siloed within just your HR systems or just your finance systems, but being able to draw insight across both of those functions to understand 
cross-functional insights about your people and your finances. Can you speak to the value of being able to gain that insight across both functions so that you can make better decisions? In addition to pulling that data in together from a finance and HR perspective, we also have four different, four or five different divisions with different needs. So looking at that data in different ways um, and, and being able to do those analyses to see where are the issues? Where do we need to focus to be able to answer the business questions, which are going to differ by division? You know, they, one division may have a retention issue, another one may not. So they may have a different focus. And being able to target things towards each area is going to be huge for, from my perspective. It speaks a lot to the to the maturity that you've developed uh, with your your analytics practices that you've moved from just looking in the past to now being able to look ahead and be able to anticipate challenges and also uh, capture opportunities. I wonder if you can speak to the role of analytics and allowing you to be more agile. HR was called upon to help prioritize the order that we were gonna vaccinate our own employees. So one of the things we always do is we try to look at things from different viewpoints, from a different lens. Uh, was no different with the vaccine. We wanted to make sure that um, uh, we were taking care of everyone. And uh, that started with our workforce. When we started to look at the data in our workforce, um, indeed, we found that we were leaving some populations behind, primarily people of color. And so uh, having that data, being able to say, uh, you know, is everyone having the same experience uh, was very valuable to us. We were able to put some special programs in uh, in place to help our employees uh, get vaccinated so that it, it was uh, an equitable experience across UPMC. I wonder if you can also share a little bit of information about our partnership, the relationship between Oracle and University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Our partnership has definitely, with Oracle, has definitely grown over the past several years. Oracle has come to us to get our experiences in whether it's a new offering, a new functionality, or if it's something that's already in place that they're looking to, to improve, you know, they're coming to us to ask for our, what kinds of experiences we're having and getting our frontline people as well as our functional users involved. So I think it's a great partnership as far as benefiting both of us. When you change out an HR and payroll system like we did in July of 19, it's a big, big initiative. There's risk involved. Uh, your own reputation is on the line. So you want to make sure that you have the right partner, you know, an organization that's been through this with, with many others, uh, others of your size, scope and scale, and they, they, they can keep pace with you. And we found that in Oracle. Uh, there were a team of experts with us every step of the way. So we just introduced um, uh, this month, actually, um, chatbots that are going to help our uh, service centers across UPMC answer questions more timely, uh, more conveniently, right at your desktop, at your fingertips. So it's that type of innovation that we are looking for and that we have uh, in the partnership with Oracle. Well, thank you for the partnership. Thank you for uh, allowing us to serve you. And thank you for the great work that University of Pittsburgh Medical Center is doing in serving the community. It's always great to hear from our customers. A special thanks to our customers, to Shandana Gopal, and to TK Anand and his team for not only describing to you what our analytics offerings are, but actually showing you actual insights through the demonstration. And hopefully you get a sense that we are fully committed to being a customer-first organization. We are here not only to help you all go live, but also to make sure you're achieving ongoing success with our SaaS applications, Fusion Applications Warehouse, and analytics. We do that by providing a complete set of cloud applications from finance, HCM, supply chain and manufacturing, on through customer experience, and now analytics across every area. Also, that underlying technology being the only vendor that's both in the technology business as well in the SaaS application business allows you not only to keep your infrastructure current, reliable, up to date, fast and secure, but also enable features like machine learning, artificial intelligence that makes our applications and analytics better. And finally, by having a SaaS model of every quarter having new features and releases, bringing you the fastest innovation on a modern customer grade user experience. You can see that we've released ERP analytics, 
HCM Analytics, and now we followed up by announcing our brand new offering, Supply Chain Analytics, and we are going to keep building. For more information, please visit oracle.com slash applications and analytics to read more about our customer success as well as the richness of our product areas. Thank you very much. As always, stay safe, and we look forward to continuing to partner with you at Oracle Applications.